Today I'm going to show you what's inside the air intake system and how it works on your car. Now in this vehicle the throttle body is located over here between the air filter and your intake plenum. All right, I'm going to lift out the battery to get a better view and then I can remove the top of the air box. So you can see this here is where air is drawn into the system. It goes down through this duct and then into the air filter box. All right, so I'm going to pull out this box. All right, so now I'm going to remove this intake hose. There's actually a passage here. It goes to a tank down in there. And here's a closer look at that intake box behind the fender liner. I can now remove the throttle body. I can now remove the intake from the engine. So here we've got the entire intake removed from the vehicle, starting with your air intake tube here, your air resonator tank over here, then your air box that houses your air filter. Then at the back here we've got the mass airflow sensor, as well as your EVAP valve. Then back there we've got the gas pedal that actuates the throttle body over here. And then of course we've got our air intake manifold that goes to the engine. Now the purpose of this resonator is to reduce the sound coming from the intake. Now I'm going to cut this open to see what's inside. So you can see the air intake resonator has got a lot of baffles inside to reduce the sound and any unwanted resonance from the intake. So here's the air intake box. If we open it up inside here, you've of course got your air filter. And the air comes from the intake tube here into the box. It goes through your filter and then it goes out here to the throttle body. So if you look at the top of the air box here, we've got this mass airflow sensor. And then we've also got the EVAP purge valve which allows ventilation of the gas system. Now the mass airflow sensor will sense the amount of air that's going through the air intake system before it goes out to the throttle body. So here's a mass airflow sensor. We've got five wires that go to the ECU. At the bottom here we have your intake temperature sensor. And then inside here we have the hot wires that read the mass airflow. And the way a mass airflow sensor works is you have a thin wire here that has a very slight resistance to it when 5 volts is applied to it. Now at idle the temperature of your wire is fairly consistent and the airflow that's moving across is fairly low. Therefore the resistance is very high and the current that's measured by the ECU is very low. Now let's say you decide to step on it and open up that throttle. Well your airflow is going to become much higher and that's going to cool off the thin wire and the resistance of that wire will now drop and the current must now increase in order to warm up that wire back to equilibrium again. The ECU will then detect the change in current to determine the mass of air that's flowing through. Alright, next I'm going to cut open this mass airflow sensor to see what's inside. You can see this is the temperature bulb. Alright, so I've removed this lid here and you can see this really thin resistor. It's very delicate, sometimes it's made of platinum. Now the entire mass airflow subassembly is made up of that thin wire circuit plus a temperature bulb as well as a calibration circuit before it goes out to the ECU. Now that current that's measured by the circuit is proportional to the density of the air. Now if you remember high school chemistry, you'll know that the pressure is equal to the density of the air multiplied by a constant multiplied by the temperature. Well since the current that's measured by the mass airflow unit is proportional to the density and for a given volume it's also proportional to the mass, the mass airflow unit is actually measuring the mass of air that's going through regardless of your atmospheric conditions. And you can see the little circuit board inside. Now the air filter's got a lot of flaps on it and that's meant to maximize surface area. And you can see that's what the cross section looks like. There's a lot of surface area for air to flow through and be filtered. Now we have the gas pedal. It's responsible for activating the cable that goes out to the throttle body. So this here is the throttle body side of the cable. You have these two screws here that gives you adjustment. So this here is the throttle body which is pretty much the most important part of your air intake system. Now your gas pedal will attach with a cable here and that will allow the throttle to open and close when you press the gas pedal and that will allow more or less airflow to flow through the throttle body into the intake of the engine. Now the throttle body has a lot of features starting over here with the little stopper screw that adjusts your throttle position. Then we've got a vacuum line here that goes to the PCV hose. Then at the side here we've got the throttle position sensor, two coolant lines over here. Then at the bottom here there's an idle air control valve and it's solenoid. Now when your throttle is completely closed and your engine is running, the air still needs to get to the engine in order to keep it idling. So in order to do that, there's a little passage at the bottom on the inside here that goes down to the idle air control valve. And what that does is it allows the computer to adjust the idle of the engine. Now the air goes through this valve, there's a little solenoid on the inside here, and then it comes out the other side here before going into the intake of the engine. Alright, now we can remove the idle air control valve. And that's what that looks like inside. Alright, now I'm going to remove that. And this is the valve that moves back and forth. You can see inside of there to open or close the passage. And if I take this apart here, this is what the idle air control servo looks like. Now I'm going to remove the throttle position sensor. So you can see when the throttle plate moves position, it moves this little tab here 
and then that tab engages with your throttle position sensor which is essentially a potentiometer and that's the back of the sensor this is the piece that engages here with the wheel that turns with the throttle position and you've got this circuit board in here that has a printed resistance on it and it turns just like a potentiometer and that resistance is what the ECU reads as a throttle position now driving with a dirty throttle body like this can cause an irresponsive throttle or a sticking throttle or even a car that won't start so the best remedy to clean your throttle body is to get a little bit of carb cleaner here spray it down and then I'm gonna come in here with my brother's toothbrush hey and start hey that's mine that's mine oh sorry now here we have the air intake manifold, sometimes called a plenum. Now the throttle body is usually mounted over here, and the air goes in and it splits up to each cylinder. Now you also know that while the diameters are the same, the length of each are optimized for the proper sound and air requirements for the engine. Now this one's made of aluminum because it's from the good old days when they made cars nice and strong. A lot of the newer cars are using plastic for this piece as well. So this here is where the intake mounts to the engine. This is the fuel rail and the fuel injector, and this is where the fuel is injected into the airstream. Now over here where your throttle body mounts, we got a couple of vacuum lines. One goes to ventilate your valve cover, the other one goes to the brake booster, and the other one is for the EVAP system in your car. Alright, now I'm going to chop this open to see what's inside. Alright, so I was able to open up the casted section where the throttle body mounts, you can see that circle inside of there. One more thing you can kind of see is where the vacuum lines connect to on the inside. On the intake side, you can see the four pipes. So I'm going to make one more cut over here. Well, after a lot of struggling, I was able to get that part out. Basically, it looks like it's a tube that's welded onto this flange here before the casting goes around it over here. And this is the side that bolts the engine. It's just a bunch of bent tubing. And that's pretty much how the intake system works in your car.